Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to look into how you can foster inner source. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this Microsoft certified Azure DevOps engineer certification course. Without wasting any more time, let's get into it. The fork-based pull request workflow is popular with open source projects. Since it allows anybody to contribute to a project, you don't need to be an existing contributor or have right access to a project to offer up your changes. This workflow isn't just for open source. Forks also help support inner source workflows within your company. Before Forks, you have always been able to contribute to a project using pull request. The workflow is simple enough. You just need to push a new branch up to your repository and then open a pull request to get a code review from your team and have Azure repos evaluate your branch policies. When your code is approved, you can click one button to merge your pull request into master and deploy. This workflow is great for working on your project with your team. But what if you notice a simple bug in a different project within your company and you want to fix it yourself? And what if you want to add a feature to your project that you use but another team develops? And that's where forks come in. Forks are the heart of inner source practices. Inner source, sometimes called internal open source, brings all the benefits of open source software development inside your firewall. It opens up your software development processes so that your developers can easily collaborate on projects across your company using the same processes that are popular throughout the open source software communities. But it keeps your code safe and secure within your organization. And Microsoft uses inner source approach heavily. As part of the efforts to standardize on one engineering system throughout the company, backed by Azure Repos, and Microsoft has also opened up the source code of all their projects to everyone within the company. Now let's look into how can you implement the fork workflow. As discussed in the fork workflow, a fork is a copy of a repository. And forking a repository allows you to freely experiment with changes without affecting the original project. So let's look into what is fork. A fork starts with all the contents of its upstream repository. When you create a fork, you can choose whether to include all branches or limit to only the default branch. None of the permissions, policies, or build pipelines are applied. The new fork acts as if someone cloned the original repository, then pushed to a new empty repository. After a fork has been created, New files, folders, and branches are not shared between the repositories unless a pull request carries them along. How can you share code between forks? You can create PRs in each direction, from fork to upstream or upstream to fork. The most common direction will be from fork to upstream. The destination repositories permissions, policies, builds, and work items will apply to the PR. And how can you choose between branches and forks? If your repository has a large number of casual or infrequent committers, Microsoft recommends the forking workflow. Typically, only core contributors to your project have direct commit rights into your repository. You should ask contributors from outside the core set of people to work from a fork of the repository. This will isolate their changes from yours until you have had a chance to vet the work. Let's look at a forking workflow. The first step is to create a fork, then you clone it locally, then you make your changes locally and push them to a branch, and the fourth step is to create and complete a PR to upstream, and the final step is and sync your fork to the latest from upstream. How can you create a fork? You can navigate to the repository to fork and choose fork and specify a name and choose the project where you want to fork to be created. And if the repository contains a lot of topic branches, Microsoft recommend you fork only the default branch 
and choose the fork to create the fork. Please note that you must have the create repository permission in your chosen project to create a fork. And Microsoft recommend you create a dedicated project for forks where all contributors have the create repository permission. That concludes this lesson and module 3. In the next episode, we are going to go through module 3 knowledge check. So I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.